It is now my pleasure uh, uh, that we'll hear from Tiziana Ulian, who is a senior research leader for Kew Gardens. Thank you very much. <laughs> Um, it's really a pleasure for me to be here, and thank you very much for the opportunity, um, the organizer, but also my esteemed former colleague, Maurizio Dios Granado, uh, that I worked with, for, with many, uh, for many years at Q. So I'm actually going to start uh, with uh, um, uh, his publication uh, that he put together a few years ago on the World Checklist of Use of Plant Species. He led this publication. They actually formed the basis of our work on the food plants at Q. So in, uh, in this publication, we look at the global status of edible plants, uh, the taxonomic and cultural diversity, the distribution, and the conservation of status of the species. And uh, I'm going also to give you, uh, quickly, <laughs> some practical example of work that uh, at Q we are carrying out uh, on the conservation and the sustainable use of food plants. So uh, on the left, well, my left, <laughs> you can see um, a representation of the, phil, um, of the phylogeny, the, phil, the um, genetic diversity of uh, food plants across the different families. So um, you can see we have a high diversity based on uh, this study on 7,000 food plants. And in particular, the richest family are the favaceae from the bean family. Then we have the poaceae, the racaceae, the palm family and the Cerasi where um, we have the sunflower and the lettuce family. But uh, another interesting thing, and I'm linking up to the previous uh, talk, uh, we also have a high diversity of cultural diversity. So actually we've been looking at the diversity of uses of food plants, and we find out all these other important uses that the species have, in particular medicine. You can see how 70% of the food plants, they're also traditionally recognized as uh, medicinal plants. And here really show the nexus between food and health. So in the same paper, we look uh, where these species are across the globe. Uh, and uh, uh, according really to the diversity of, of uh, plant species in the world, we found uh, that uh, at the lower latitude, um, so the higher species richness, it's uh, a lower, uh, lower latitude. And actually the richness decreases as we go far away from the equator, from the tropical areas towards the poles. Um, we also look at the conservation uh, of these species, the conservation assessment. Um, basically, 86 um, of these species that we found that they were assessed, they are conserved, but we still don't know about all the other, the conservation status of these other species. Um, and uh, most of the one assessed, they are conserved ex situ in botanic garden or in uh, Seed bank, like the Millennium Seed Bank, where I've been working for uh, almost 20 years. But uh, how shall we ensure the conservation and the sustainable use of this high diversity of food plant? Um, well, here I'm giving you my first case study of uh, our work uh, in the Eastern Mediterranean region. We are working with collaborators from Jordan and Lebanon. And we develop a framework uh, that goes from the, the documentation of food plants um, by carrying out a thrombotanical surveys, but also compiling all the, the information from the literature there to their conservation and the sustainable use. But we did this also alongside research. So we carry out research on the seeds that we collect for conservation, and we look at the germination requirement. And this information is very important because it really inform the regeneration, the cultivation of wild edible plants for which this information doesn't exist. And also we carry out uh, the um, characterization of the, uh, the nutritional elements of the species. And this also helps us support us to promote the species for their sustainable use in, for example, festival, food festival in the region, but also like in the restaurants. So there is all a network of, uh, um, of restaurants that are really uh, based their gastronomy um, on uh, wild edible plants. And then I'm showing you this other second example on the medicinal plant species, sorry, on, in Mexico. And in Mexico, we are working in an agroforestry system and uh, we develop a framework in order on one hand to enhance the capacity to capture carbon to mitigate climate change in the coffee plantations under shade. Uh, and uh, 
uh, on the other hand, we are really um, uh, looking at using the wide diversity of native trees that are still uh, present in fragmented way in the cloud forest in this area and looking at uh, uh, their ecosystem services, the other uses. So for example, here on the right, after a participatory approach by involving and combining the traditional knowledge of the local community and also uh, selecting the species from a scientific point of view, the one that they have a high capacity to capture carbon, we came up uh, with the priority list and here you can find some of the species that are all edible, by the way. So like uh, the Cinini, the Persea schidiana, that is uh, a well relative of the avocado that we all know and eat uh, um, uh, nowadays. But also we have other fruit species uh, from the Inga family, the legumes, and Gasparito is actually an edible flower and is used in the gastronomy uh, widely in Mexico. And by doing so, what we want to do is to create an impact uh, on the research by documenting this important diversity of food plants uh, around the world, um, but also generating knowledge. And all this knowledge that is still not there, in particularly when we, we talk about well edible plants. We want, of course, to conserve these species, but at the same time, we want really uh, to uh, use them in a sustainable way uh, by really looking at their diversity and ecosystem services that they have uh, alongside this diversity of species. And ultimately, but not the least important, we are aiming to generate a social economic impact. So in this way, really to uh, address uh, the sustainable development goal, food security, climate change, and many other, and also thinking about the local community and their livelihood. So with this, I finish. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> you can join me over here, Tiziana. You can join me over here, thank you. I, I loved what you said about cultural diversity and biodiversity going hand in hand, and that communities have been using food as medicine for, for generations and, and using these foods sustainably and those benefits, there's so much opportunity for nutrition, for carbon sequestration, for health and well-being. It's just very exciting. So thank you for sharing that with all of us. Thank you.